At the end of the yard by the old oak tree, Sam's pa built a shed and painted it green. He used it to hold his buckets and spades and more grown-up things like hammers and blades. Built for the winter, sturdy and weatherproof, Sam found a way to sit on the roof. Be careful, said Pa. Don't you go and slip. Surrounding the shed was the old compost tip. If I fall, said Sam, I'll fall in the mush. And when the snow melts, I'll fall in the slush. Well, watch your step, though it's not so high. But watch those oak branches don't catch your eye. I'll be careful, I promise, said Sam as he did up his jacket and pulled from his pocket a potato chip packet. As Pa wandered off and Sam finished his snack, he felt very happy alone on his shack. He sat there a while, watching tiny birds whip, and over the fields he saw little bucks skip. From his high elevation, he was, for once, able to see the wilds of the garden, just as it was meant to be. How lucky, he thought, for the grand old oak, to have sat here all this time and to never have broke. As evening fell and the sky turned around, it occurred to Sam he had no way to get down. On my way up, I took such a leap, which now I turn to go down seems far too steep. I should wait, he said, for Pa to come back. Pa's know all the answers to getting off shacks. But a little time passed, it was getting late, and Sam started thinking of his dinner plate. It was pasta that night, the kind Sam's brother liked best, and if he wasn't there early, there wouldn't be any left. Losing all hope, Sam began to weep, and to mop up the tears, he pulled from a branch a leaf. But at just that moment, something let out a moan. Sam turned to the oak, which seemed to have grown. It threw out its branches, which caused it to creak, and Sam watched in awe when it started to speak. Dear fellow, I know it seems somewhat odd for me to be speaking with a young tetrapod. But as you may know, I am an ancient oak, and you are not the first with which I have spoke. Many a young fellow have told me their woes, and I have endeavored to soften their blows. By whatever means I may, given my limitations, I am of course tied to my roots and have other ancient obligations. I will help you out of this high situation if you'd be so kind as to consider this compensation. I have grown quite accustomed to my place in this life, watching autumn turn gold and winter turn white. As the years roll on, I may need a friend to make sure I don't meet an untimely end. Of course, said Sam, if you get me down, I promise to protect you for as long as I'm around. It would be an honor to make a friend of a tree, especially one so old and so close to me. And with that, some creaks, some thick branches bent, and formed a ladder for Sam's descent. Thank you, old oak, I'll love you forever! Sam and the tree shared an embrace together. As Sam turned around, a branch touched his shoulder. Please remember me as you get older. Of course, said Sam, how could I forget? You're the most wonderful thing I've seen yet. I have known man, said the oak, and yet a man you are not, to trivialize buds like you for what is man forgot. So, if anybody should question that you spoke with a tree, well, just know that I'm here if ever you need me.